Hello, my name is Jared Hybart. I am a product manager here at Yokogawa, and today we'll be covering common maintenance items for the FC800D. The final maintenance items we'll cover today is how to maintain the FC800D's drive line. This includes the motor, the drive shaft, and the rotating contact. So you will need a large Phillips head screwdriver, as well as a small Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and the two millimeter Allen key included with the FC800 part. For driveline maintenance, the first thing you want to do is remove power from the analyzer. With the power removed, we can undo the two screws at the bottom of the FC800 and place the measurement electrode assembly into the maintenance position. With the electrode assembly in the maintenance position, we can loosen the four screws on top of the measurement assembly and remove the motor cover from this assembly. The first thing we'll do is replace the motor. You want to first disconnect the wires from the motor, being careful not to pull too hard because there is a ground wire connected to one of the screws holding the motor in. Now we can remove the four Phillips head screws at the base of the motor, making sure to keep track of these screws. You can then loosen the Allen bolts with the two millimeter Allen wrench that are part of the coupler. This is the two metal discs with the plastic disc in between. Loosening these will allow the drive shafts to be removed. With the screws removed, you can lift the motor straight up, being careful to keep the motor couple pieces together. To install the new motor, it is the same process, but in reverse. Making sure that the coupling underneath the motor is assembled together, you place the motor on the motor mounts, being sure that the two plastic nubs on the motor mount line up with the holes on the motor bracket, and that the drive shaft lines up with the coupling. With the motor in place, you can screw in the four Phillips head screws, making sure that the ground wire goes back onto the screw that it came off of. At this point, you can reconnect the connector to the motor. We can now tighten the coupling Allen screws back together, making sure that the couple is firmly attached. And you can reassemble the motor cover. And put the analyzer back into measurement position. Perform a calibration and the analyzer is ready to measure. When replacing the rotating contact from the point of where the motor has been removed, we can now remove the coupling from the drive shaft itself. At this point, I recommend undoing the large terminal first and removing the wire with the rotating contact because you will need to transfer this wire to the new contact. You can place a flathead screwdriver into the slot on the top of the rotating contact and loosen it counterclockwise and then unthread it by hand. This will now expose the rotating contact. Use the plastic pieces on the side of the contact and lift it straight off of the drive shaft. With the contact removed, you can now transfer the wire attached to the contact to the new rotating contact. With that wire attached, we'll now install the new contact. Handling from the sides, put the new contact onto the lower drive shaft, positioning it so that the wire can reach the terminal that it came off of. We can now install the retention screw, first starting off by hand until it's tight and then just giving it a little bit tighter with a flathead screwdriver. At this point, you can go ahead and screw the wire back into the terminal. At this point, we can replace the coupling on top of the retention screw and begin rebuilding the motor assembly. After removing the rotating contact, you now only have the drive shaft assembly left in the drive line. To replace this, the first thing you want to do is remove the wires from the reference electrode. 
These wires are all labeled, as well as there are labels on the reference electrode itself, so you don't have to worry about mixing things up. With the wires removed from the reference electrode, you wanna go ahead and loosen the collar on the reference electrode with a flathead screwdriver. With it loosened, you can now press from the bottom on the reference electrode and begin to push it out of the top. As it comes out of the top, you can then grab onto it from the top and remove the electrode. Now we can remove the measurement electrode, stick the two millimeter Allen wrench into the hole at the base of the drive shaft. You wanna turn it clockwise because the electrode is a counter screw. We can now loosen the three screws holding in the drive shaft assembly. With these three screws loosened, lift the drive shaft assembly straight up and set it off to the side. There are a couple more things you wanna remove. There is a white opaque gasket that was sealing the reference electrode. You want to remove this because a new one comes with the drive shaft kit. There's also a black O-ring at the bottom of where the measurement electrode is. Remove this, a replacement for this also comes with the drive shaft assembly. You now have completely disassembled the drive line of your FC800D. We can now start assembling the drive shaft assembly back together. You wanna to start off with replacing the opaque gasket that you took out from the reference electrode, as well as that black O-ring for the measurement electrode. With these two sealing components reinstalled, we can replace the new drive shaft assembly straight down into the measurement electrode. There are two plastic pins in the bottom of the measurement electrode assembly case that help you align this drive shaft assembly. Using the screws from the old drive shaft assembly, tighten down the new assembly. You do want this to be tight because this is a sealing component. You want to now replace the measurement electrode you want to now replace the collar that you removed. We can now replace the reference electrode. It will slide back into the spot that you took it from. It will take a little bit of force because that gasket is sealing it once it is pressed all the way down and doesn't move anymore. And tighten it with a flathead screwdriver. With the collar placed, we can now reattach the wires, making sure that the correct wire is going to the correct terminal. Now that you have the reference electrode reinstalled, we can now start building the drive shaft assembly back together and calibrate your analyzer and put it back into operation. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or would like more information, please contact us at yca-support at yokogawa.com.